Plane of justice, plane of disease, plane of nightmare, plane of innovation, plane of valor, plane of storm, ruins of Lixanvom, plane of torment, plane of tactics, halls of honor, tower of Salisuk Row, the bastion of thunder, plane of water, plane of earth, plane of air, plane of fire, and plane of time. By the power of Grayskull! You put these things all together, guys, and what do you get? Planes of Power! What's happening, guys? I'm Scoobs, and we are back with more EverQuest. This time I'm back on my Necromancer, as you can see, Skull. I'm gonna call him Skull. The X was after the fact. I'm not calling him Skull X. That just sounds ridiculous. Skull, Lich Skull of Talonzek. So we right now are in, who knows where this is, and I know a lot of you guys that watch my videos only play on P99, which is original classic EverQuest, Ruins of Kunark, and Scars of Velius. This is Planes of Power, which is the fourth EverQuest expansion. After Velius, of course, came Shadows of Lucklin, Luslin Lucklin, however you want to pronounce it. We got Cats on the Moon. You guys know the story. After that... Planes of Power came along, and for me, it was one of the most memorable expansions that they ever created in the EverQuest franchise. And not to mention, it was very highly critically acclaimed. Why, you ask? Why was this critically acclaimed? Because it was awesome! So keep in mind that up until this point, dungeons were very specific. You didn't need a lot of flagging, you didn't need a lot of keying to get into most dungeons. Until Planes of Power. Because in Planes of Power, guys, there were 16 main major zones. And they were all off of this zone, which is called Plane of Tranquility. And if you can hear the music, let me pump up the jams here, guys. Let me pump up the jams because this is some of the best music in all of EverQuest. If you just want to have a chill out day, if you had a hard day at work, you come home and you want to play EverQuest and you just want to relax, you went to Plane of Tranquility and you just went AFK and hit it as background music. Listen. It's so serene, it's so peaceful. If I could have this on like a soundtrack, and maybe they do guys, maybe they have this on a soundtrack, let me know, comment below if you've seen an EverQuest soundtrack, because I would love to have it. But moving on, 16 zones, 16 raid zones, because this expansion was focused on the high-end raider. EverQuest went from a max level of 60 to 65, so they had their first big jump of five levels in a long time. And you needed it because this was hard stuff, really hard stuff. So 16 zones spread out through four tiers. Tier one through three were your normal type zones. Tier four was the elemental zones. Plane of fire, plane of air, plane of water, plane of earth. And then after you beat all of those zones, all 16 zones, which included multiple flagging events that the entire raid had to do, you had to be present. And if you got it all done, then you got access to plane of time. Plane of time A and then plane of time B which was Candyland for raid mobs, Candyland for the best items in the game. And if you got that down to farm mode, it was amazing. It was such a good time in EverQuest. This is what I call the golden era, the golden days, the old days of EQ. For me, this was right here. A couple of videos ago, I talked about a little bit about my PvP history. And when I was on Talonzek, I was in a guild that eventually became Discordia. And Discordia was like the good guys, right? If you talk about the Rebellion and the Republic, we were the Rebellion. We were I, we were Han Solo and Luke Skywalker, guys. And the evil Republic was called Pandemonium. And these two guilds were the top, the very top on this server, and they were constantly battling out through the expansions. And for me, the most memorable PvP battles, like on a large scale, we're talking 70 plus people on each side. Think of that, in a zone, 150 people, 140 people, all just slamming together and trying to kill each other. It was amazing, amazing. And guys, if you were in Discordia, which used to be Veneration, which used to be Chosen Blood, or Pandemonium, comment below, would love to hear from you guys. I know you're still out there. I'm doing a series based on the Planes of Power expansion, and we're gonna go through not all of the flagging events, and not all of the zones, but the zones that had one end boss. One big boss at the end that you had to beat in order to move on to the next tier. We're gonna go through those zones, and I'm just gonna fly through them, so it'll probably only take a couple videos, but we're gonna start with Plane of Disease. Grummus was the main dude in Plane of Disease, so there was a couple little flagging events, and then once you got into the main castle, in Plane of Disease, you had to go kill Grummus. So, coming out of Plane of Tranquility, you would go right here, and this big 
ugly sewer pipe is plain a disease. Now these agents of change right here came afterwards much, much later. They were not originally in this expansion. So we'll just ignore them. But to get in here, you literally have to plug your nose and you gotta head into the sewer. So here we are at the entrance of Plain of Disease. There's probably nobody here. Nope, it's just me. This was a really cool zone because not only did you need it to do the flagging, but it was also a really good experience. And it was at this point in EverQuest that alternate advancements, if you press the letter V, as in Victor, on your keyboard, comes up with your alternate advancement window. These were additional skills and abilities you could get, and it was just, you, you killed mobs to get experience. So this was a great place to do that. And I had so much fun here. It's a big zone, and it's kind of creepy looking. Planes of Power was really the first expansion that really, really upped their graphics. Like, it's a huge difference between these graphics and Shadows of Luckland, which came before. So if you make your way all the way, we're gonna use maps here, guys. If you make your way all the way to the western part of the zone, right here, you will see an entrance to what is a castle surrounded by a wall made of, I think, vertebrae, right? Some kind of giant dragon or whatever it is, whatever you guys wanna think it is. Look at these, so cool. Oh, so cool. And the, these were all where the light crawlers were. The light crawlers were the better experience, in my opinion, in the zone. Look, there comes my pet. Come on, is it Jeptic? Yeah, come on, Jeptic. <laughs> Hurry it up, buddy. All right, guys, so once you killed all your little light crawlers here that were giving you a hard time, there is a door right here, very obvious, guarded by two disgusting looking dudes. They're like zombie type guys and you could get into here. Now we are inside the castle. Inside the castle. And I'm gonna leave it in this F10 mode so you can see there's not much chat going on anyways, but this way you can see more. So we're gonna make our way up through the castle on our way to Grummus. Hey, what? Who's casting? Get out of here, man. Where's Jeptic? Jeptic, get to work, buddy. For God's sakes, Jeptic. There you go. A firebone caster is dead. All right. It's really not that big of a castle, but you have to weave your way through here. And if you look, I think I mentioned last video, if you con these guys now, it'll tell you right here on the bottom what level they are. So the max level in this expansion was 65, and these guys are level 55. So, you know, it, you could kill them with a group pretty easily, but as you move in here, there's more and more and more and more and more. So we're gonna make our way around the outer portion here of the castle and there's gonna be another staircase that leads up to, uh, to where Grummus is. And I think you needed a key. What's that? Ooh, Grime the Crypt Guardian. Grime the Crypt Guardian was, I think he was a flagging event or at least a key event because he dropped a key that you needed to get inside any further. Look at this guy, he's an ugly dude. Look at that nipple ring. <laughs> Sweet bro, he must have been a little under the influence when he got that. Although he seems like the kind of guy that would have his nipple pierced, right? There we go, he's dead. Okay, so let's see what he dropped. His loot's all the way at the bottom. Yeah, you see this key here? Whoop, right here. Grimes Crypt Key, so I'm gonna take that. I don't know if I still need it or not. What dropped here? Yeah, bunch of junk. So I'm gonna take it just in case I need it. Ah, oh, get out of here. Get out of here. Okay, so now we got the key. We can continue on our quest to find Grimace. And the Grummus model, the graphics model, looks just like Grime, but I think it's bigger, if I remember correctly. Okay, so I do need a key here. It's not letting me in. I have to be holding the key. So there's that key. Whoop, is that the right key? Oh, that's not, that's a gem etched key. That's not the right key. Grime's Crypt Key. We'll open the door. Okay, we'll head in here. I put my pet on hold because I don't just want him destroying everything right off the bat. Otherwise, he could kill something important and you guys don't even see it. So, now that we're in like the inner sanctum here, there's just a bunch of these Deathbone guys who are the guardians of the castle. And I mean, you, you would have a whole raid force for this. And this was 
the easiest flagging event, one of the easiest flagging events, and you would just tear through this with your guild. But see, the thing is, guys, that originally nobody had the flag, so you'd have to do it once, but as we got more and more involved and did this over and over again, we would do back flagging. So that was one of the raid nights, right? You would have your raid targets set up through the week. One night was dedicated just to back flagging. So we would come do all these. And of course, everyone was like, oh God, I don't want to do back flagging again. Because we've done this a million times, but the new guys in the guild needed the flags. So it is what it is. It was something to do. Here's another named here. And as you work toward Grummus, this is one that you would come up with. Uh... Aramin the Spider Guardian. Get him, Jamchik! Jamchik, get him! Maybe it's a her, yeah, that's a her. That's a female Black Widow, because you can see the hourglass on the bottom of the abdomen there. That's a giant spider! Giant spider, Jamchik! What kind of damage is he doing? Uh-oh. Ah, oh, gross! I hate spiders! <laughs> Alright, so let's see what Aramin the Spider Guardian dropped. I don't know what the bracer of rotting bile nothing great but as you move past her then you get these kind of these elite guards right and then when you see the the different armor like this you know you're getting close to the main boss oh <laughs> there's dudes everywhere so I mean you can tell that this took some time right I mean even with a bunch of people it took some time to weave your way through this these guys obviously didn't go down as fast as they are now I think this is right. I, I don't even remember. This seems right. I mean, it, I couldn't open that last door, so I must be going the right way. Spider webs! Ah! Ah! <laughs> Alright, what's behind this door? Open! Oh, there he is! Grubbus! Big Grubbus! Is he the same size? I think he's bigger than that last Grime, the Crypt Keeper guy. But this is him. I'm not going to have my pet attack. I'm going to see what one spell does. So watch what this does to him. Oh, so 25,318. Look at his health go down. So if I just stack a couple dots, think about the damage, guys. Here we go. I'm going to stack just three dots on him. And you can see how much it's stacking. 25k, 50k, 33k. It's crazy. And then you just stick your pet on him. Necros do an enormous amount of damage now. It's awesome. I love this class. So, Grummus is dead. Yay! And see, look, see this little planar projection? Cool, it still works. The planar projection is what you hailed. If you say hail, and if you don't have the flag, it says, you know, a little yellow text that says you've gotten the flag or something like that. And everybody has to hail this guy. And there's been times, and I personally have done this, where I was so excited we killed the guy and I didn't hail the projection. Comment below if you've ever done that. So I didn't hail the projection and then everybody bailed, right? We gated and I was like, oh no! So I had to wait till the next time we did the back flag. It was not, not cool. Not cool. So let's see what he dropped here on the bottom. Ring of the Pox Bearer. 80, so required level 55. So 65 was the max, required level 55. Actually, this just says recommended. So they had things, they had items that were recommended and required. If it was recommended 55 and you were below 55, you could still use it, but the stats were diminished. If it's required, you have to be that level. What else we got here? Pus covered beetle carapace. Ah, that's kind of a cool little dealio for, uh, for a caster. Yeah, not bad. Alright guys, so that does it for playing a disease. Like I said in the beginning, we're going to do a series of this video, and if I can get one or two or maybe three zones done in one video, great. I do want to pay attention to the time, though. This has gone on long enough. So that's going to do it for me, guys. Thanks so much, as always, for supporting Scoobs and the channel. I look forward to doing more of these videos in the next couple days. Continue to like, comment below, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you like this sort of stuff. Until next time, bye.